Hello guys and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today we're going to talk about a ship buyer's guide overview on combat ships and which to choose if you're looking for a single pilot ship or a ship that can be effectively operated with a single pilot, solo, wanting to specialise in combat. There is an accompanying spreadsheet as well for this video, so please check that out. It has all the relevant stats on all flyable ships, uh, as well as a taster of 2.0. Uh, and we'll be updated with stats and chain ships and anything more that's added to those ships or new ships that are added. For starter ships, there are a variety of Mustangs and Auroras, which are perfectly acceptable for a starter combat ship. But... The Aurora LN, which is slow yet tanky and surprisingly upgradable, for me is, if you want to specialise at combat as cheaply as possible, the best ship to go for. The Aurora LN for a starting ship, yes, it's slow as ships go, but it has great armour, which will mitigate a little bit of energy damage and a lot of physical and distortion damage. It also has surprisingly good hard points for supporting equipment, as well as size 2 missiles, 4 size 2 missiles and lots of weapons. It's got a really good upgrade potential here. For clearing out Vandal in PvE, it works a charm. PvP and Arena Commander, people ignore them a lot of the time. They can take quite a few hits, they're very, very tanky, but they're worth very few points to kill. So, you get ignored a lot of the time and can get a lot of kills because of that. Those turn of events are unlikely to happen when the Persistent Universe is around, but you are tanky, you have reasonably good at armament, you have those size 2 missiles as backup, and good pilots will be able to handle themselves. As a couple of extra perks, which aren't particularly combat related, but are useful, um, the ship has a bed, which will allow you to operate away from dock for longer periods of time, more safely, and you can carry a small amount of cargo with the optional store rule box. But the ship doesn't have an ejector seat, so you'll have to jump out the airlock if things do go a bit wrong. So the next level on from there, all these ships that I'm about to talk about have their own advantages and disadvantages. None of them will break the bank. I think the, the Hornet here is the most expensive at $110, but all the rest are under $100. So first off, the Hornet, the standard Hornet F7C, that is a solid combat ship. It's a little sluggish compared to some of the other dogfighters though. It can carry cargo or you can give it more guns. You have some modularity in what kind of cargo compartments you give it or if you want to change that into a big gun turret. It will suit regular traditional combat very well and has great upgrade options to fit better shields and weapons. It also has eight size one missiles, which can give it a lot of stamina in a fight. It is very good at traditional combat and taking hits and then giving them back. The Mustang Doubter, this is the combat variant of the Mustangs. It has great weapon options and some damage mitigation with its cavalry armor, but relatively low HP. It's quite gas cannony. It has to rely on dodging enemy fire, whereas the Hornet or the Aurora LN can take a lot of damage. The Delta shares the 200 combat speed with the Hornets, meaning that it can be a disadvantage in some situations. It is more agile, but it's still the same top speed. The Gladius. The Gladius is an extremely powerful, versatile dogfighter. It's a little faster than the 300 series, and it's very agile. It's 240 max speed compared to the uh, Hornet's 200 max speed. It can take a few hits as well. It's not tanky, but it's certainly not weak. It's got relatively good armaments and can hold a lot of size 2 missiles, making it the bane of slower dogfighters. It is a really, really great combat ship. The 325A, though there are other ships in the 300 series which are perfectly suited to combat, this one's built purely for combat. The ship has armour that mitigates damage, it's relatively fast with a 230 max speed, and has great loadout options. A size 3 gun on the nose and then two size 3 on its sides are really quite strong with the right weapon choices. It also totes four size 2 missiles, which combined with its special targeting system, allow you to target and lock onto multiple hostiles and fire those missiles at each of those hostiles simultaneously. It's actually pretty cool. In Vandal Swarm, this is one of my favourite flyable ships by far, and will get to a really, really nice score in Vandal Swarm. 
The Avenger. This is fractionally slower than the 300 series with a 225 max speed, but it has a very powerful gimbaled size 3 weapon on the front of it, which maybe one day we can change for a fixed size 4, but not today. Um, this combined with its two size 2 fixed weapons on its wings and four or size 2 missiles give it actually quite a powerful loadout. But in my opinion, it's just not as good at straight traditional combat as a 325A or a Gladius. But it does come with the prisoner pods as standard, and it's cheaper than the 325A and Gladius. So if you're on a budget, or you want to multi-roll into bounty hunting, then the Avenger is a great choice. Those um, prisoner pods, those cryostasis pods, are going to be able to put prisoners in. And bounty hunting... Is kind of combat as well. You're going to be going around blowing up ships or at least defending yourself. So now we're going to move on to slightly more specialist ships for specialist types of combat. Um, so the Hornet Tracker and the Hornet Ghost. The Hornet Tracker is going to be more specialised to tracking and scanning down targets. I expect it also to be quite useful against e-warfare ships too. It's still combat capable. But for traditional combat, it might not be the best choice. There are other better choices. The Ghost has Void Armor. So this is, again, another Hornet variant. Uh, and is basically a Hornet, but just harder to see and detect and lock onto. In combat, it has the advantage over the standard Hornet and some other dogfighters that rely um, on missiles when engaging. So... If you're getting attacked by a gladiator or something that's going to be relying on its missiles to deal damage to you, it's going to be really, really good for that. You're going to be be able to avoid those missiles a lot more. It's quite a sneaky, sneaky ship. People aren't going to be able to detect you so well. You're going to stay off their radar for a lot longer. It's not as sneaky as a pure stealth ship like the Sabre, um, but it's going to be a lot more sneaky, stealthy than another dogfighter. The 350R. So the 350R is the racing variant for the 300 series, and it is really, really fast with a 300 top speed. That gives it the edge over a lot of other ships in dogfighting if used right. Speed is a your greatest advantage in this ship. You don't have the armor, though, that the 325A has or its targeting system, but you can upgrade it to have a similar armament. So you can put that size 3 gun on the front. You can put two uh, big size 2 weapons on the side. For me, until the Sabre is flyable, the 350R is my interceptor of choice. It excels in intercepting craft and working in a team to flank other ships or to outrange them. The Gladiator. So this can have two crew and it's basically a missile boat. You can have a pilot and a gunner in it. But it's certainly manageable by a single pilot too. Its role, as I said, is that of a missile boat or a bomber. In long-term sustained battles or dogfights, a Hornet might serve you better, though. But as a supporting ship, or taking down larger targets, or even just going for slower targets, using its missiles correctly, this ship, this missile boat, is a very powerful ship. But it is slow, and dogfighters who are agile enough to avoid its missiles won't have an issue taking down the Gladiator. The Kartu Al or the Xi'an Scout. It's not in the game yet, but we know it's going to be agile as heck. It's going to have a 270 max speed, which is pretty, pretty speedy. It outpaces pretty much all of the other dogfighters. It does have room for two pilots as well, and it's quite small as a ship. It has a loadout of two size 3 weapons and possibly an additional two size 2s. It's going to play very differently to a lot of the other dogfighters, though. Uh, Rather than having traditional engines, it's going to have like a thruster rig. So it's going to be very agile and strafey, being able to just move in any direction pretty freely. It's likely to suit skilled pilots very well who want to manoeuvre in combat. And as like a heavy skirmisher, I think this is going to be an amazing ship. But as with a lot of ships, this Xi'an Scout, we're going to have to wait and see how it actually manoeuvres and works in the verse. Because it's going to be moving at in such a different way compared to the other ships. So now we're moving on to what I refer to as the top tier stuff. These are, in my opinion, the best solo combat ships um, that you could fly just with a single pilot. Uh, and these ships are pretty expensive and some of them are very specialised in a certain area of combat, but they are some of the best choices for ships that you should be working towards in-game if you haven't purchased them outright already. 
the freelancer miss. So yeah, this is a limited ship and the freelancers probably all operate better with multiple crew, but they're certainly going to be manageable by a single pilot. The miss though is the true missile boat and combat variant from the freelancer series. It will be able to carry a huge amount of missiles and reload them in combat too with its specialist reloading arm. It also has its two large side turrets that make all the freelancers quite powerful in combat. The Vanguards. The Vanguard is an extremely powerful combat ship. It has a few flavours or variants that are all solid combat cho choices. The Harbinger is much more of a missile and torpedo boat and is very well suited against slower ships like Constellations and Retaliators. I'd expect it to be able to rip those ships apart. The Sentinel has an E-War specialisation for those inclined. And the Warden is the, the standard model, as it were, but it's more survivable than the others. In fact, it has an escape or survival pod to make sure that those pilots survive. So it does have room for two crew and probably operates a lot better with two crew, but is perfectly manageable with a single man or single pilot. They suffer from not being agile like other dogfighters though. They're not dogfighters, they are combat ships. And against dogfighters, although the vanguards are incredibly resilient to damage and have lots of redundancies and a huge amount of powerful weaponry, they're not really built to deal with agile ships, um, or certainly very agile ships. So I would expect them to deal with super hornets and slower fighters with ease, but uh, a Xi'an scout is going to well, a good Xi'an scout pilot is going to be able to just outpace them. The Sabre. The Sabre is my favourite combat ship in concept at the moment. It's a combat ninja and stealth ship. A deadly potential of four size three weapons on the front of that ship. Out of all of the ships, this is the true stealth fighter. It's built to be a stealth ship. It's going to have powerful shields, but not much hull health. It will be an extremely fast and agile ship too. I would expect this ship, however, to be possibly the best uh, of the single pilot dogfighters. We will have to see how the ship develops and is balanced before making a firm decision, though it is in concept, most of the others are flyable. So we need to see that to see where it's going to lie on the pantheon of, of, of other ships. But if you like speed, sneaky, sneaky, uh, ninja dogfighter, then the Sabre is for you. For me, in dogfighting, I need a mixture of deadly weaponry and speed and maneuverability, much more so than um, armour or um, tankiness, say. The Glaive. The Glaive is the heavier version of the Scythe and is really, really agile. It can ram ships with its blades and has a selection of powerful vandal weaponry. For me, this is a very much a heavy skirmisher ship and is very good at hunting most other dogfighters down with relative ease with a good pilot. It is, however, very expensive and limited as a ship. It's very much a collector's item, but it is a very powerful combat ship as well. The Glaive was sold in extremely limited quantities, uh, but it's possible both to get one in the future, and you can certainly capture one in the verse, although it might cause some trouble or take some time at the very least. The Super Hornet. So the Super Hornet still leads the pack in Arena Commander at the moment, really. It has really heavy armor, which mitigates a load of damage and a great armament. It can bring so many weapons to a gunfight and mount powerful, powerful shields. It does suffer from being a bit sluggish, which pretty much all of the Hornets do. Um, so other dogfighters can have an advantage over it. And CS missiles are much more likely to find their way towards you as a Super Hornet pilot because of your armour. Your armour makes you more visible to those CS missiles and to CS locks. Other than just being able to take a load of damage and having access to loads of powerful weapons because of its hard points, it also has an extra seat too, which gives it some extra flexibility other than most of the other dogfighters and certainly more than the other Hornets. I thought it was worth mentioning a couple of other ships um, just as side notes to not annoy people. So the Cutlass, the Cutlass is a pirate stream. It's a little bit more of a multi-cruise ship, but is manageable by a single pilot. I wouldn't choose it as a single pilot combat craft though, when there are so many other options if you want it to be um, in a single pilot, dogfighting or combat ship. The Cutlass is a little bit too big for its own good, and its vital systems at the moment certainly can be carved off like a Sunday roast. 
It really, really well suits boarding and scavenging, though. And for that, I would suggest certainly a, a larger crew. With with a, a two members, th three three crewmen, that ship really comes into its own, and you can be boarding other people. It multi-rolls really well. And again, we mentioned the Freelancer Miss earlier, but the Freelancers in general are totally combat-capable ships, and are manageable by a single pilot. Though they probably operate better with two or even three crewmen, but they are certainly good combat ships, but they are more multi-role. They're certainly not the best single pilot choice you could have here. So my choices in summary for a starter ship, Aurora LN. I really like this. It's got a nice mix of armor, armament, and it'll get you in the game pretty damn cheap. Under $100, I'd say the Gladius is probably the best choice at the moment. Agile and versatile with a good loadout. I really, really like the Gladius. I think it's a very powerful ship. So for the best for dogfighting, certainly, and possibly the best for combat, are always tied between the Sabre and the Super Hornet for me. So the Sabre, with its stealth combat, it's going to be fast, it's going to be agile, it's going to have powerful weapons. I really like the idea of that. It's going to be able to clear out PvE instances of enemies pretty fast. The Super Hornet... It's tanky, it's got loads of guns. I mean, it, it's gonna be able to survive and outlast a lot of damage. There are another couple of choices here as well. Certainly some people are going to prefer the Glaive. Um, it's very much a collector's item. It's very expensive as a ship, limited run as well. So getting them might be like a badge of honor to a lot of players. So they're certainly gonna like them, but they're over $200. I think they're 350. That's just a lot of money for a ship where I think a Sabre or a Super Hornet might even be better. The other ship that you might wanna go for over $200 or get one in the verse are the Vanguards. Now these aren't dogfighters. These are going to be very, very powerful combat ships though. I'd expect them to be taking down like constellations and retaliators and those medium sized ships and lower level multi crew ships with relatively good ease and packs of them being able to take on Idrises and stuff like that. That's the kind of role that I see the Vanguard has in the universe, but it's certainly not as a dogfighter. It is too slow, but that being said, if it surprises a ship, it's going to blow it apart. It's got loads of big guns, it's got loads of missiles and put torpedoes and the different flavors of Vanguard allow it to specialize in certain areas. I really like the Vanguard as a combat choice, but it's not a dogfighter. So that's my opinions and thoughts on single pilot combat ships. Um, so there is a there is a good lot there. I mean, there's certainly ones we haven't mentioned, but I'd say that we've mentioned the ones that are purely for combat or certainly better for combat than some of the others. I mean, yeah, there are lots of other Mustangs and Auroras, which again, as I said earlier, are perfectly acceptable for combat, but some of the ones we mentioned are just more suited for it, for traditional combat, certainly. As I said earlier, there is an accompanying spreadsheet with all the details of the currently flyable ships in Star Citizen, which I will update as more become available or as they change their stats. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. It really does help me. And next time, we will have multi crew ships on the discussion table for combat ships. Um, hopefully helping you choose what you want to use in 2.0 Alpha. Take care guys and I'll see you in the verse.